Ghanaian anti-LGBT bill gains strong support from Christians. On August 2nd, the promotion of proper fam sorry, on August 2nd, the promotion of proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian Family Values Bill of 2021 was passed in the Ghanaian Parliament. The bill uh, will impose a five-year imprisonment for being LGBT. Additionally, supporting the LGBT cause will warrant a 10-year sentence. Uh, Victor Madrigal uh, Borlos, UN's expert on sexual orientation and gender identity, said that the bill violates the International Human Rights Treaty. Most of those who support the anti-LGBTQ bill are members in, of the major Christian churches in Africa. Graham Reed, the director of the LGBT rights program of the Human Rights Watch, claims that the biggest supporters of Ghanaian's new, sorry, Ghana's new bill are doing it for their religious ideology, adding that, quote, the bill is, quote, a case study in extreme cruelty. So I wanted to talk about this because um, it was... Uh, let me double check. I think it was Al Jazeera or was it AP? I saw recently a large publication covering this story. Oh, yes, it was the Associated Press. So the Associated Press did a long story, a really good profile about how Africa is getting more and more homophobic. And this is, and they directly hold the Christian congregations in Africa as responsible for um, this rise in homophobia. Uh, in fact, in they profiled a lot of different countries, including um, Nigeria was part of a large focus, um, but they had a particular focus on this bill in Ghana. And I wanted to read a segment from Human Rights Watch that illustrates what this bill is like, um, but it kind of uses a metaphor or a comparison. So they say, quote, the bill represents a witch hunt against LGBT people in Ghana. Um, so let us consider, this is from a Human Rights Watch, what the provisions would look like if it were applied to, say, Christians. So imagine if it was Christians, but really it's LGBT people. Imagine a law that required anyone who knew a Christian to report them to the police. A Christian who admitted it would face three to five years behind bars. If she said it was okay to be a Christian, six years. If she had proselytized in any way or shared any information about Christianity, five to 10 years. If she had provided a meeting space for her congregation or raised funds to support her church community, five to 10 years. If she allowed a Christian to stay in her house, three to six years. If she sent a tweet with the symbol of the cross or a Facebook post with an image of Noah's Ark, five to 10 years for her and the social media platform's owners. If anyone else, perhaps a Muslim neighbor, publicly shared that they supported her Christian denomination, up to 10 years. This is no exaggeration. This is what the proposed law says. But it does not apply to Christians. It applies to anyone who does not conform to arbitrary and subjective sexual and gender norms. Um, and then it said, this is an affront to dignity, privacy, and non-discrimination. It is an assault on the freedoms of speech, expression, association, and assembly. So I wanted to talk about this because I wasn't aware of how, um, how severe this law in Ghana was. I had heard a little bit about it, but I didn't fully understand or appreciate the totality and severity of what is being entailed in this bill that is once again couched in the framework of protecting the family. Like, <laughs> this is why I feel like family, Armin, we need your meme. Um, <laughs> family is just the classic excuse and facade that right-wingers or traditionalists just bring forth because most human cultures think that there is a value to family naturally. It's how we take care of the most vulnerable in our society, children, 
the elderly. It's a, it's a central part of any societal structure, right? But they use this because it's something that's important to all people and say that this is being threatened by these people. Oh my God, they're going to take it away. And it's a complete straw man. <laughs> like nowhere. It's, it's absurd to think that this is the variety and diversity in sexual expression or gender expression is a threat to any familial structure. If anything, the hatred of this sexual and gender diversity actually does fracture families more. One, because it causes parents to ostracize, if not actually harm their children who display such things. Or there are many situations where there are people who are um, socially coerced into having a marriage that they don't want because it's what's expected of them. And many times, eventually, the truth comes out that they are not heterosexual. And then they become um, an outcast from their family and their society and their community because they can no longer repress this very central part of themselves. And then oftentimes for these people, they have had children and it splits apart their families too. Um, and so I just, I freaking hate that excuse. You see it all over the place and it's such BS. They've been using this excuse since like the sixties and it, ah, <laughs> uh, but I, uh, and what's shocking or surprising is that in comparison to many African countries, Ghana has a much better um, human rights standards or human rights record. Um, but this is a major step backwards in that sense. Um, I have more that I want to say, but Armin, what do you think about this? Is there anything the international community could do to push back against this and like, you know, try to get undo this like is there being any um reaction as a as a way to try to undo all of this damage um i mean there are organizations like human rights watch who are reporting on it and calling no. it out and i'm sure that yeah. i mean no, frankly, i'm, I'm not political scientist i i can't i don't know i don't know mm. besides um international bodies um calling them out i mean like it. I don't know. Like, for example, we say like, oh, my God, do you know, do, uh, the, the Taliban in Afghanistan, right? There su seems to be co economic trade is conditional on recognizing, you know, the position of women in society, right? So why is it that the recognition of LGD LGBT in society all of a sudden wouldn't become a conditional... Um, standard for economic trade when it comes to a christian country like you know like ghana so why wouldn't there be the same level of condemnation and also penalties and consequences i mean this is a lot worse i mean this is what they're doing to lg in in the christian in christian ghana what they're doing to lgbt is worse than what taliban in a muslim country is doing to women there no, I was. Oh, you you were, you thought I was going to say LGBT? Of course not. LGBT is worse than the Taliban, right? But I'm just saying, like, the idea of you just your identity or support of your identity just gets you jail sentence, right? This is extreme. Like, I think this is, shows how far LGBT activism is relative to as much as progress we have made when it comes to LGBT activism is still eons behind women rights activism, right? So it's like women rights has the one that has made the most progress and then maybe minority rights and then LGBT other minority ethnic group minority rights and then LGBT is behind that even though in many countries it has made a lot of progress and then after that is like trans rights and also atheist rights right atheist anti atheist discrimination gets ignored the most i think that's the last on the list the worst but again, this shows how far behind we are. Like if this was about, I don't know, woman, I think you would have gotten a lot more condemnation and reaction compared to LGBT, even, you know, so we, this is a good reminder of how far, you know, LGBT rights is still globally. 
Right? Yeah. Another thing, um, another thing I want, but wait, another thing I wanted to highlight was that this is something that we could unite with a whole bunch of anti imperialist, anti colonialist leftists, right? I think like that force, that attitude, this is where it could be used the most. You know, because they 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 cry a lot about things that are not justified, but I think here it could be like, like this is like a Western the influence of the. This is the remnants of the whole Christian, um, Christian branding being used as a way to impose uh, values, f foreign values upon like an African country. You know what I mean? Like, you know, a lot of anti-imperialist, anti-colonialist leftists would have an issue with like, look, you're bringing in your homophobia yes. from the United States. So we could be I... like, yes, this is that's true. Look, this is, a, we agree. We, I think we would agree with it. I think that that destructive force could be used effectively here against this movement. But yeah, go on. Well, the problem is, is that many of those types tend to be, um, uh is in some forms um anti-interventionist um and also they would have trouble with that lens perhaps getting the effect that they would want because many um previously colonized in um areas that were either uh, lands or countries where slaves were extracted from or where the slaves ended up, there is a culture that, or attitude that believes that homosexuality is actually a Western import. And so they would say, actually, us being homophobic or being against this is decolonizing or get, getting rid of the imperialist influence because this is something that the imperialists brought to us to corrupt our men and to make our men weak and to make our society weak and to make our um, cultures and ethnicity weak against imperialist attack and imposition. And All right, so I know, I know what the yes, those are the dumb arguments. They could make those arguments, but I'm just saying for the people who are saying that this is an influence of Christian missionaries upon these countries, then we we would agree with them. Whatever I mean, whatever dumb arguments the other side wants to make, let let them make that. I'm just saying that that in this case, this would be correct. The the the, the leftist people who are against I don't know toxic values coming out from foreign countries into these you know african or middle Eastern countries this would be one case where we would be like you're correct and we would we could work with you and fight highlighting this you know what i mean i'm not denying the fact that there's a counter argument to this that i don't know i don't think it makes any sense yeah. well i yeah. mean um i agree with you theoretically that's making the assumption that the um traditional culture that came before wasn't actually homophobic like maybe it actually was i'm not actually it, familiar it was i mean it was but not in the way that these they not in the way that they say like i don't know the white man was using this as a way to not in the way they say it anyways i don't mm. want to get into too much detail well um, one but, thing one but, thing i wanted to touch on briefly one other really important thing that this article covered was that many congregations in Africa are so homophobic that they are actually going to split away from their main congregations. So for example, the, um, the Catholic church has been like completely consistent on this and hasn't changed. So this isn't an issue for the Catholics, but for the Protestants, there's been a lot of shifts in the, quote unquote, Western world or in Europe. And for example, the Methodist church in Europe um, saying that there can be LGBT clergy, you can bless same sex marriages, etc. This has caused huge contention in the African continent to the point that a lot of congregations across Africa are joining together, also along with some congregations in the United States to leave their actual branch and denomination altogether and then form their own new denomination that is in the works of um, being declared uh, that so that they could maintain their 
homophobic policies. So they don't have to have LGBT clergy. They don't have to feel pressured to bless same-sex marriage, um, etc. I thought this was really interesting because as someone who grew up as a Catholic, like I, the whole, I, I don't know, I, how these Protestant congregations um, organize themselves and um, then vote on things and change their positions is just utterly fascinating and alien to me because this is not how the authoritarian <laughs> Catholic Church works at all. Um, and the article also covered this church in Kenya because they were talking about the problems, and, but they also talked about there was a church that actually does, it is LGBT welcoming. And this church in Kenya, they were talking to AP, uh, meaning the Associated Press, and um, saying that there are actually people who conspire against their church and spread like fake news and hateful messaging around their church and even people after them to try to get them to shut up and quash and silence their congregation that is actually welcoming and um, loving towards LGBT people. So it's a huge problem and um, it is religiously motivated. They say so. <laughs> Armin, right. you were going to say? Yes. I want to uh, highlight something in the live chat because I think people are not understanding what I'm saying. Okay, here. Mia is saying, in, a, in, in other words, so this is in response to what I was saying before regards to comparing women in Afghanistan compared to LGBT in Ghana. Um, and Mia had, had this uh, understand, a complete misunderstanding of what I was saying. Okay, so I just want to clarify that in case other people had the same misunderstanding. Saying, in other words, you're telling us African nations are worse than the Taliban for LGBT. At least the Taliban provides some comedy with their intent. No, I'm not saying that. Maybe you have hearing problems, Mia, again. I was comparing LGBT to women's rights to show how far LGBT rights is compared to women's rights. Not... I wasn't comparing because obviously if you compare LGBT in Africa, in Africa, in Ghana with LGBT in under Taliban, the Taliban will score lower than Ghana. Okay. Because their lives, you know, their lives is more, more likely at risk in Afghanistan under Taliban than Ghana. Okay. So I wasn't comparing LGBT in two different countries i was saying that even in even as a place as bad i was using rule under taliban as one of the worst examples of what religious rule could be i was saying even as a, in a place as bad as the afghanistan right now uh women rights is ahead of lgbt rights in somewhere less bad like ghana that shows so i was comparing lgbt with women rights not afghanistan with ghana does that make sense do you understand does that make yes when you first were expressing this i was like oh that's a bad take but th that makes more sense <laughs> yeah, may okay so yes maybe if you guys paid like yeah i'm not yeah anyways. it's not my fault you guys are just not listening <laughs> oh okay <laughs> it's it's obviously not my fault i don't make mistakes um all right. Did you want to add anything before? No, oh, let's so go to Mia the next news. Oh, good. I accept your apology, Mia. Um, somebody is promoting dinkoism in our live chat. Yes, yes. We know. Dinkoism we know. Dinkoism is cool. Yes, yeah, cool. You know cool. about dinkoism? Yes, it's the rat. It's the Indian. It's India's version of the flying spaghetti monster plus the satanic temple. Yeah. Yes. So we it's already cool. know. We already know. It's cool. Yeah. We, we endorse support it. Dinkoism. Thank you. Um, and also, stop asking me to make videos. Susanna is the one who chooses what news we cover. You should be asking Susanna. Why do you ask, Why do you guys act like I'm 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 the boss? Susanna is the boss. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. 
So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.